To Joey, Chris, and Gabe, master of the universe horror podcast, which by the way rocks. My name is Suzanne Snyder and you guys need to listen to this podcast. Thanks. All right, everyone, welcome back to Master of the Universe podcast. Joey Cage here along with CJK and uh, the Man Beast Gabe. And this time we're talking about Suspiria, released in 2018. This is episode 54. Podbean just uh, sent me an email. They're like, congratulations on 50 episodes. And they're a couple of weeks late, them sons of bitches, but it's all right. But anyway, um, <laughs> Guys, I mean, first of all, before we get too too deep into this movie, because this is a remake from the original 77. It's a lot different than the original, but like I said, we'll get to it. A lot to talk about. I can't wait to hear Chris, you know, talk about how much he loves this movie, because if he doesn't, you know, someone's going to get, you know, you know, someone's going to get the business. But anyway, Gabe, you, you had some fun this weekend or last weekend, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cult Classic Minicon in Bastrop, Texas. It was pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty great, actually. I uh, got to meet a couple of people over there. Uh, Mike Martinez, uh, one of the killer clowns from uh, Outer Space, uh, along with a couple of other a uh, couple of other guests that were there too. I got to meet them. Uh, you know, got to talk with them. Got to chit chat. You know, see how they're doing. Uh, Debbie. Uh, mm -hmm. The main uh, one, uh, the main actress for Killer Clowns of the uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, uh, she was there. Uh, her name is uh, Suzanne uh, Snyder. Yeah, yeah, Suzanne Snyder. There you go. And I uh, got to chit chat with her. Really nice lady. Like she is like really like just down to earth, real pleasant to talk to. Just real easy going. Um, you know, I, by the time I got there, because. Uh, I had to wait for the, the wife to get her hair done uh, before we can even split to go ahead and uh, uh, you know meet some of these guests before we took our ride. So by the time we got there, you know, uh, it was a l little bit of a crowd, not too much. Everybody was still, you know, uh, doing their whole social distancing, you know, wearing their masks, uh, you know. But either way, I, I mean, it, for being a cult classic, um, this was actually pretty good. I, I enjoyed it. It was pretty neat. They had a lot of fun things to look at. You know, talking with the the killer clowns uh, uh, from outer space, uh, they did have like a lot of little things. I posted some. Uh, I ended up posting up some pictures that I took with them uh, on. Uh, I posted them up on Instagram on my story. I'll probably just go ahead and post them later on. And uh, I also got to talk with uh, Mike Martinez. Like I said, uh, one of the main uh, killer clowns, and. Uh, he was giving me some little tidbits because I like to do the interesting horror facts, which I'll post up uh, later on this weekend. But he started, uh, I asked him, uh, you know, a couple of things about some interesting facts. And he was giving me some little tidbits about, you know, behind the scenes, how long it takes him just to put on the costume. Uh, it took him like at least like two hours. He had to explain like a bit of the process. Uh, the mask he was wearing, you know, he's and right through the he said he was looking through the mouth he, he didn't uh, he was looking through the mouth of the mask he wasn't even looking through the eyes at, as much as you would think like just looking at the damn clowns um he said it was pretty entertained the the cast was all great to work with um yeah i mean it, it was it was pretty interesting pretty fun it was great um you know got to get a uh, shout out so mm -hmm. that was pretty neat um all in all there was a lot of uh I even got to uh, meet Lou David, uh, who was a uh, Cropsey from uh, uh, The Burning, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically a whole about a, a prank gone wrong, uh, summer camp prank gone wrong, and then all of a sudden here uh, he comes back from uh, he comes back you know all burnt up and everything, and he's taking 
he's taking out his vengeance on all those kids that pulled a horrible prank on him. Uh, just like the movie title says, The Burning, so that's what happened. He caught on fire. He came back for revenge. Looked ugly as shit. Just start killing off these kids one by one. So thought that movie was great. Uh, talked with him and his family. His wife and his son were both there. Son was really badass to me. He was real conversational, real like just because the conversation, uh, just explaining a lot of things. Um, you know, his, his dad, you know, Lou David, uh, he was a real nice guy, real pleasant, you know, same thing, real nice guy too. Um, again, I, I was chit chatting more with the son than I was with uh, actual, the actual actor. And uh, he was uh, just kind of talking with him, chit and chatting, throwing things back and forth. So just kind of got into the groove of, you know, chit chatting with him. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, really neat. It was fun. Um, this weekend is Houston Horror Film Fest, so I'm definitely going to be trying to all uh, do some live streaming. So, you know, uh, any, um, pretty much there's going to be a lot of classic guests. Patty Mullen from Frankenhooker is going to be there. Yeah. Uh, Bay Ling, I think that's right. Uh, her name is, right? Bay Ling, the, the girl from The Crow. Um, she's uh, Laura Park Lincoln, uh, the main hero for uh uh, Friday the 13th, Part 7, uh, The New Blood, uh, the girl with the powers uh, mm. fighting off Jason. So she's going to be there. Uh, they got Danielle Harris. You know, uh, we just ended up doing a Halloween, uh, uh, the Halloween franchise. So, mm. you know, we were talking about her. So she's going to be there. That's pretty neat. Uh, you know, they got the whole Rob Zombie Halloween cast there. So I I'm definitely going to go ahead and live stream some of this. I'll get some... Uh, I'll definitely ask some uh, interesting facts, some interesting questions. I'll try to chit chat with some of these guests, along with me just being a vendor. I'm not really so much participating, but I'm more of a vendor there. So I will be, you know, kind of back and forth between, you know, sitting at my booth and kind of jumping, you know, back and forth. You know, Clint Howard will be there. You know, the original, the ice, you know, the the killer. You know, he's also known for, uh, what was it, uh, Quark, right, for Deep Space Nine for Star Trek, if, you know, if there's Star Trek fans out there. You know, he's, uh, so he's known for that. Um, so Clint Howard, you know, the guy from uh, Waterboy? <laughs> he's a couple yeah, of... Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 He, he's, uh, as much as I don't like Adam Sandler movies, uh, I did watch that one, and yes, he he is in there. Those are like um, the, usually like the funnier the funnier parts of the Adam Sandler films are all the all his buddies that come out in those films they just have little minor roles and shit. <laughs> I'll yeah, say Joe Montana. That's usually with like, yeah, that's usually like a lot of uh, comedy movies. It's usually like all the side characters that are like more hilarious that more than the main actors in in the damn movie. Um, you know, uh, I I don't know uh, as far as like news updates. Uh, if y'all are keeping up with uh, horror conventions, there's Texas Frightmare Weekend that's in Dallas. They just announced that there was quite a few cancellations. And they, if you got any photo ops or you have any kind of special tickets uh, for these guests that were there, you might want to check on that because they ended up canceling some guests. I got to so, ask some, Gabe. You, not to cut you off, but I always hear you say yeah, yeah. there's this horror convention this place and this horror convention in that place but like do they ever happen here uh here in san antonio they they do um we had uh, if you all know where crossroads mall is or oh, yeah. now it's called uh mall of america i think or yeah, wonderland called, mall, uh, mall of america yeah 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 there you go there you go uh they had they would have a halloween con or many uh, mini horror con. They they do some minor little anime conventions there. Um, there is some that do have uh, the. Also, there's a little convention center too. Uh, they used to have Texas Comic Con uh, right there next to 410 and Marbach. Uh, that canceled that that Comic Con, but they do have like the gun. They do regularly have like a gun show, and they do have other events there too. Oh yeah, you're talking about um, the Jackson Gun Show used to be 410 right inside 410 on Marbach. Right, right, right. And um, the only other place that I, I can really think that actually is more up to date with doing special guests is that um, that flea market. Um, oh man, uh, Trader's Village. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, which isn't too far uh, right there off of, uh, what is it? It's 410 also, right? Mm -hmm. um, they also have they, uh, they also have some uh, special celebrity guests there. Um, it's usually uh, it's usually hosted by like some uh, comic book stores or whoever's going to be running a convention. They usually have like little mini guests there. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a couple of people um, that ended up showing mm -hmm. up there a couple of times. Like Laura Park Lincoln ended up showing up there once, uh, so I got to meet her there. Uh, uh, this was a couple of years back. Uh, just recently, they ended up having some other ones. Uh, actually, I, I ended up mentioning it to you guys. Uh, it was uh, the new Pinhead from the new Hellraiser. Uh, was it Hellraiser Revelations? Yeah. Uh, the, that newer movie. So he ended up showing up there uh, doing an autograph signing. And like I said, there was um, Ray Park, uh, the guy who played Darth Maul, uh, from the Star Wars uh, episode one, he was there doing an autograph sign. But they pop up a little bit here and there over San Antonio. The thing is, is just trying to, as much as they do advertise for it, you just kind of have to pay attention because it's it can be easily missed, very easily. I mean, sometimes like some of these horror guests will show up at a if they happen to have any kind of car shows or things like that. It's it's just one of those things you kind of. Uh, you know, like, uh, I'm not sure if San Antonio Current is still running, but I used to look at their, in their little free little newspaper just to kind of see any events or rock bands or special things going on. Uh, I'm not sure if they still have that running, but uh, that, that would probably be a good place to look or just kind of, same thing, San Antonio Facebook, just kind of keeping track with Traders Village, see if there's anything going on there. Uh, that's another hot spot you can try to check out. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's my little rant about, like, little conventions going on. Um, I mean, I, I've been seeing, uh, Monster Mania Con. They have, like, some fantastic, like, I kid you not, some badass horror guests that are showing up there. This is Pittsburgh. And, uh, oh, man, I, I kid you not, I was... I was like really contemplating like what how I can scrounge up some bucks just to go, mm -hmm. but no, I <laughs> too broke <laughs> can't make it. <laughs> so all my money's kind of tied up right now. But yeah, fantastic! If you're going to Pittsburgh, uh, Monster Mania Con, you are man. All you people are like really lucky to go. Uh, I found out uh, Thora Birch, uh, that's the little girl from Hocus Pocus. Uh, she's gonna be there. She was. Uh, her more recent activities is that she was in the, if y'all have been keeping up with The Walking Dead, she's more of a, she's one of the more main actresses. I think she's Alpha. Uh, I think I think that's her character's name in, in The Walking Dead series, uh, the more recent episodes. So she, she'll be going there along with some really bad, at Doug Bradley, you know, the original Pinhead, he'll be there. Uh, man, I'm just jealous. I wish I can go. <laughs> On to Suspiria, man. So, I uh, the, the I had actually heard from from uh, from your wife, dude. And you know, that sounds funny. From your wife, dude. Your wife told me. Like, I had asked her. I was like, "Is there any scary movies that you know that you and Gabe like like?" Because I'm always trying to get ideas. Luckily, you're on the podcast now. I just get them from you. And she had mentioned Suspiria. Now, I didn't like ask her. Is it the new one? It's the old one. So I just went ahead and watched the the old one, and. I thought it was pretty interesting. I, I didn't like I didn't finish watching it because it's one of those films to where when you're 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 gonna watch it you got to be like you know paying attention because it's like like a clockwork orange just kind of weird strange shit and lots of colors. So when you say hey let's do this one and I put it on and it's very different. I was like okay Chris definitely is Chris, Chris is definitely not gonna like this film because I, I started like looking at how long is this movie? It's you know two and a half hour movie and sure enough. Chris, can you want to, you want to, before I before I spoil it for everyone, you want to tell us, you know, your 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 experience putting this on, what's going through your head? Because I know you weren't as big of a fan of the film as me and Gabe, or obviously Gabe's, you know, likes the film a lot. He suggested it, so I want to hear 
you know, what you're thinking when you put this on and, you know, so on and so forth. I'll jump in and ask a few questions, and I'm sure Gabe will too, but I want to give you the floor to kind of let you kind of steer on your experience with Suspiria 2018, man. Yeah. For the record, I also got started on the 1977 one uh, yesterday, uh, and I turned on the trailer. I watched the trailer for it, and then uh, between yesterday and day, I got to the, like, 35-minute mark on it. That is a good fucking movie, but this one, no. This one, I just felt like it's, <laughs> for as long of a movie as it is, and I know, you know, you didn't care for me saying this, but it's true, like, to at least my my interpretation of my viewing of it, it had a, a late 70s horror feel to it, this 2018 movie. So I'm thinking, okay, as long of a movie as this is, as slow of a buildup as they're doing, as much mysteries involved, as dark of a feel as there is overarching and everything, I was like, this is going to be great. This is going to be a really badass movie, a badass payoff and everything. I just got to be patient and make it past the hour mark. I, I started dozing off around an hour six the first night I tried really watching it. And I was like, this is going to be, this will be great when we really get deep into it, like hour and a half, close to two hours. Screw but, it that, but, 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 but that's the thing is that I have no clue. That's the, this is the part where I told you I'm going to jump in with a baseball bat and come after you. As you're, you're an hour in, and you don't find the movie interesting at all, like, I don't know, when the chick starts dancing and the chick that's leaving all of a sudden is getting this fucking horrific, bone-breaking, you know, witchcraft-type thing going on. Like, that wasn't like, okay, what the fuck's going on? That, that had no effect on you whatsoever? Like, whoa. I was I was intrigued by that, but I just, you got to understand, I'm someone, I look for the logic, the underlying logical premise of a story. Okay, the and underlying this, logical premise of the story. I want you to explain that in English for people that are that are wondering what do you what do you what do you mean by that? Meaning, I want there to be a story that I want a story that makes sense. I want something that's logical. I want something that when when we get to a certain point. So anything, like, so anything that has to do with witchcraft, you're not interested. No, no, no. That's it has. It's not about witchcraft. It's about okay. This was a slow well, build. Well, so well, you, well, I'm, I'm like I'm trying to understand what you're saying. Like it's got to be logical. Well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't any, like... any any movie that you're going to watch with any kind of fantasy element, any kind of paranormal element, it's not going to be logical. So no, when you say – Nope, that's, you... no, that's got nothing to do with it. It's not about because it's supernatural. It's just because I didn't feel like – I didn't feel like it paid off with a good explanation of what was happening, why, who's who, et cetera. I mean, you, they just set you leaving there to just interpret all this weird shit going on. It's like they tried too hard – to be too intelligent, too smart, and too above people's heads, I don't, and too like I don't want to say virtue signal because that's a different type of thing, but I mean intellect signaling, like brain signaling. Like look at us, we're so smart. We wrote this, you know, ridiculous, crazy to understand story that doesn't make a whole lot of sense and like doesn't have that great of a payoff and doesn't have a doesn't pop you, you know, toward the end or anything. It just really didn't do that for me. Now, the first Suspiria. That one looks like a we're not, we're not We're not going to talk about the first one at all. Let's talk about this one because I don't want to get off track because then you're not going to talk about this film. Let's talk about this film only. I just didn't care for it. Like, it really didn't, like, it starts because, off because, with... Because cause then you're going to drift too much into that one. Then we're going to get okay. into no, the... No, no, yeah, well, yeah. Well, well, I'm, t I'm talking about it now. So this one starts off with this fucking... Like, I don't know who's... Now, when I watch when I rewatch the movie again because I turned it back on before we started and I rewatched this and now that I've already seen it, Everything makes a lot more sense. It's a much easier story to follow. But I shouldn't have to watch it a second time to enjoy it or get it or follow it forever. I should be able to follow it from the get-go, or at least at the 30-minute mark in. I should uh, be able to and I, be emotionally... Yeah. Go ahead. Are you there? Hey, I'm here, yeah. And be emotionally... In and be emotionally invested where I'm behind a character, I'm rooting for somebody, I'm rooting against somebody, or if I'm not there yet, I can at least appreciate elements of people. And I really don't in this. Like, it just, I, I, nothing caught me in this. It's just this weird, weirdo fucking dance studio. And I know there's witchcraft involved here because of what I'd heard about it. So I know that's part of it. So I'm waiting to really see where that really rears its ugly head. And it wasn't to any meaningful degree until, like, <laughs> Well, I won't get into the story, but I just, I didn't care for it. It was too hot over people's heads written. They were trying too hard to show how smart they are, how clever they could be. Um, it's not uh, – like I've said it before, I'll say it again. You can have nuance. You can have swerves. You can have all that stuff. But at the end of the day, the basic premise is 
You have a relatable baby face that people are connecting Oh, my God. Here goes that wrestling heel. talk. It's not wrestling talk. This is every story in human history. Is like no, this. it's not. You don't heal, and you build up the face on the heat of the heel. It's that simple. No. Anyway, Chris, when I knew Chris, when he put on the movie, and he was five minutes in, he was complaining to me and Mark, and he goes, here, here, this girl walks in. I wanted to tell you this, like the day he told me, Gabe. But it's like when you do, when you say it with your voice, you can, you know, can really get it more over than in text, right? And he's all like, you know, he said, "Tell me, no, I didn't say that." He goes, "I'm, I'm watching the film, you know, when that chick Patricia comes in there, like, you know, b- babbling on about witches, and I'm already like, whoa, what the fuck's going on, right?" Well, Chris is all like, "Who the fuck is this girl? What the fuck's she talking about? I thought the film's gonna start off with with Susie Bannon going to a school." So right away when he tells me that, why is this intro different? Why is this girl going on about witches? Who is she? Who's this doctor? I'm like, Chris, the movie just started. Like, And then Mark's laughing. He's like, well, yeah, Joe, don't you know that Chris needs to have like lights you know, like go around the person's head saying who they are and what their character is motivated by for Chris to pay attention? I started laughing. I'm like, yeah, the movie just started. Like, If you need to know what this per- per- person's purpose is within five minutes – I mean, you could put on any movie. I don't think anybody does that. So when he said that, I was like, oh, it's just because it's slower pace. And I didn't think it was slower pace. I thought the intro was right away. Okay, it's over. You know, I, I wasn't interested to watch it when I was like, like, Suspiria, oh, it's about dancing and shit. So I was like, okay. But when I put it on, she's talking about witches. I was like, okay. I, I you know, I kind of forgot that that was kind of the Suspiria thing, that these these chicks are witches, you know, this, this school. And so I'm like, okay. And the first, I mean, but it... it, it it's two and a half hours, but I think if you're – I'm sure what the thing was was Chris was too busy winking at Rose and blowing her kisses instead of watching the movie because when, you, when you're by yourself and you're focused on the movie, you watch it. But when you're like – you have other things going on, you're not going to really pay attention to a movie that's not like having Michael Myers jump out. You know what I mean? If you, if you give – if we give Halloween H2 an, an 8.5, dude, and you give this one, I, haven't, I don't want to hear your rating yet. Lower than that, I'm like, okay, you know, I understand we have different opinions on, on a lot of shit, but goddamn, son. Anyway, um, I was thinking, I was like, well, you know, this is gonna be kind of slow because she's going to the school, and you, you already know, like you're saying, well, who's, who's, what's going on? Well, I know right away the, the main, the main, uh, like headmistress, whatever her name is, uh, uh, Tilda Swinton, who's the actress who plays three different roles. Uh, yes. Yeah. So I see her, and I know her. I think her name's uh, Markham or Helena something. Well, Helena Marcos. Yeah. So I know she. To me, I had no idea that there would be the big bad witch, whose mother is Suspiriana. What's what is her name, Gabe? Suspiriorio. Yeah, that one. You uh, know. Ma- yeah, that's uh, the. This is like the main character that's based around this movie is Mother Superiorium. That's the one. And then there's two other mothers. And that means Mother the... Superiorium means Mother of Size, right? Yes, Mother of Size. And you see that in uh, one of the main actresses, Dakota Johnson. She's expressing that in the beginning of the film where she's actually, uh, you know, sighing the whole time when she gets some time to herself. Uh, and you'll actually end up seeing that on the pegboard behind her when it's talking about uh, mm-hmm. the dance of uh, the Volk dance that they're getting prepared, that they're getting ready, they're preparing for. Oh, but go ahead, Joe. Um, but yeah, no, I, I knew like right away, okay, so, you know, uh, Madame Blanc or um, that, which one, which one's Madame Blanc? Oh, that's that, that, the main one, right? That's the main heel lady. That's, but, yeah. that's that, that's that yeah, weirdo that's frozen death smile. smile. Evil yeah, that, that's that's what that's what yeah that's like the head head one behind the scenes, baby. Ah, yeah. yeah, the bad the bad the big bad one. But yeah, uh, Alina Marcos is there, and I'm thinking like, okay, the you know after after Patricia left and she's oh she went missing. They start talking about that. I'm like, oh, okay, this is good. And then the other uh, one of the other dancers starts freaking out like, oh you know like I forgot what she says exactly, but that's when she gets all broken up, and that shit's brutal. Like, I was like, oh, man, after seeing that, I was like, I want to see what the rest of the like, – it kind of reminded me of kind of like a hostile movie, you know, where it's just like all, all kinds of gore but without over overdoing it. But, like, it, it reminded me of it with all the breaking of bones. And it just was – it was awesome. I was like, wow, this is good. And um, it's something that you don't normally see in a horror movie, you know, for, so I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, and then you start seeing Susie kind of get like stronger and like, I'm not even into dancing, but her dancing so believable. I'm like, okay, you know, fuck what's, you know, I'm interested on 
why is she able to do this? You know, it's like, is are they are they over, overwhelming her with power? And we find out way later on. Well, either the 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 real mother's you know took over her, or she's always actually, been. Go ahead. Yeah. Actually, uh, the the reason why she's uh, uh she's getting stronger and she's getting like so much better at her dancing is because every person that she's killing. Or not so much killing, but all the students that are dying, she's taking their, their like their essence, like their abilities, and that's where like the first one, uh, you end up seeing Olga, the one who's all twisted up. Yeah. That's why she's all mangled up. Uh, like one of the main, uh, like one of the main themes, or like the kind of subtle thing that they're saying is that. For someone that you idolize, they're saying you have to bend a lot of backs to support the main one. And so at pretty much that it's saying like uh, it, this this movie leaves like a lot of kind of subtle references and little things like that. But they're saying like because how much Olga is pretty trashed out, she looks all garbage. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why Dakota Johnson is like all of a sudden she's like she's getting a little bit stronger and you see this throughout the movie, uh, even with uh, her friend, Sarah, who also ends up becoming a victim, who ends up, she ends up dying, she ends up getting killed. But uh, before she ends up getting killed, she's wearing a, like a pink robe, like a kimono type style. And then by the end, you know, uh, you know Dakota Johnson, who's you know, plot twist, you know, she's Mother Superiorium, you'll see her unrobe herself with that kimono, basically implying that, you know, I've also taken Sarah, you know, her her friend, you know, I've also taken her ability, I'm also, you know, getting stronger. Uh, but there's like, uh, there's a whole bunch of little subtle things throughout this movie. But before I go on my rant, now I'll, I'll let you, you that, explain. Well, Gabe, you saw that culminate too, when they finally get up to the attic, I know I'm probably jumping, but when they get up to the attic, you see the girls who have had, like you said, their essence taken from them, as their essence being taken from them benefits the dancing ability of Dakota Johnson. And they get up there, and that one, what, who was it? Uh, was it Patricia who was like fucking like rolled over on the side of the attic and like uh, yeah. could barely talk? And she's like yeah, just seen like Patricia her foot or shit or whatever. Yeah, Patricia is uh, that Chloe Grace Mortez. Who was also uh, uh, she? Uh, she played in some other movies, like Let Me In. She was like that little vampire girl. Um, yeah, so like, it, yeah, she's taking the essence, and the whole reason, the whole idea behind this movie is, be and the why she's being built up is because she's going to become a vessel for Mother Marcos, uh, who's supposedly running uh, running the whole academy behind the scenes who's supposedly dead which she's really not and she's getting re she's her body is dying out so the whole point of the movie is that they need a vessel to transfer her in into so that way she can live longer and you know running the show again and yeah. that's why they're building up Dakota Johnson throughout the this movie how awesome is that shit like you know, the whole film's got this good build-up, and then they go, like, you know, they, that whole ending, like, completely blew me away, dude. Um, when they're there kind of getting ready to sacrifice her with that, with that final dance, and, you know, um, Helena Marcos is trying to stop it. She's like, no, it needs to be pure, you know, all this and that. And then um, Madame Blanc, you know, does that arm gimmick, dude, gives her the chop and, like, cuts, like, almost severs her head. Uh, but it like it's like almost completely cut off, but it you know like it's just hanging there like the penis
And I, when they when they kill, or I thought was you know she was she was dead. Uh, and I, I freaked out. I was like, what? They killed like the, the top, the top chick. You know what? I knew the other one was the main one, but still I was like, man, that sucks, you know? And, um, and then Susie, you know, like, uh, like you were saying, starts talking like, oh, you, you know, you said, you, you know, I'm sure you can, you can quote it better than I do, uh, or I can. And she, when she's saying like, did you say mother Suspiriana, you know, is the one that gave you her powers or whatever, blessed you to be the next one in line or whatever the fuck. And then, then like that, she summons that death, you know, that I don't know what the fuck to kill everyone in the room. And I thought I thought that was like, wow, that's that's amazing. Like, I wasn't expecting that in this with film. All those, with all those heads blowing up. Yeah. And all blood and guts all over the place. That, yeah. it, they went extreme on that. That was that was nice. I like that. Yeah, I wasn't that expecting was that. Really... Like, we go from this movie that starts off like, oh, you know, it's a German thing where she's freaking out. And then. You join the school, then it starts with the dancing, and then it gets more crazy with the dancing, and you know, chick being hypnotized, uh, and then. And what about what about when Velma from Scooby Doo uh, stabbed herself? Oh, <laughs> uh, Miss Griffin. Uh, yeah, like, yeah that, she... the whole time in that movie, you could tell she's part of that witch clique, but she's not comfortable with how what they're fucking with other girls with, as she's just like having a conscious issue. She has a fucking nervous breakdown. And you you could kind of tell throughout that movie though, uh, ever since uh, Dakota Johnson, you know uh, Susie, uh, that's her character's name in there. Whenever uh, whenever the moment Susie ended up arriving to that academy, um, you know Miss Griffith, uh, this lady who with these huge big you know thick Ray Ban type glasses, you know sitting there, she knew something was up the moment she ended up walking in. Now, yeah. it, it, it just, you can tell looking at her, she was uncomfortable with everything. Now, the, the, there's, two, uh, there's two ways of looking at it. The one way that I was looking at it, I was like, oh, man, uh, this lady is, like, eerie, and she's getting very upset. She's probably, you know, she's probably fearing for Dakota Johnson. She's fearing for Susie throughout this movie and then ends up killing her. But then... Uh, kind of thinking about it as a rundown through this movie then I, I started thinking like you know what maybe it's because it's not so much that she was uh she was fearing for her but maybe she was fearing her yeah not for her but fearing her because maybe she actually knew that she was mother superiorium and so i mean that that was kind of, that, that was kind of my take on that i i felt like she, like uh, Chris said, you know, she knew there was something up. She felt uncomfortable with the academy, the corruption, and things that they were doing, and she could not live with herself. Uh, she, you always see her in the background of everything, and mm -hmm. finally, at one point, the whole witch's coven, you know, all the the superiors, that all the teachers and everything, they're all gathered around eating bread, you know, drinking beer, you know, they're having a good time talking Buffalo about... Buffalo chicken quesadillas, come on now. Yeah, with the good, you know, barbecue sauce, you <laughs> know, just the right way. And then what happens that, you know, Miss Griffin's there in the background, she's just like, you know, I can't, I can't anymore. She gets up, grabs one of the damn knives off of the table... Boom, right in the neck, just cuts it open, just falls right on the table, just blood everywhere. All the ladies are all panicking, like, oh, my God, what in the world? Stop the, they're trying to stop the bleeding, trying to save her, but no, there's there's no saving her. She's She ended her life, and I think she knew what was coming. You know, the second time around watching it, uh, I, I kind of felt like, like I said, I think she had a glimpse that she knew Dakota Johnson is this superiorium, this mother. Yeah. But, but that was my, you know, sorry. So, <laughs> no, you're good. Can I bring up another thing, element of this movie? Yep. As this movie progresses, they get further and further along with the, uh, the German Autumn, the RFA, PFLP, Lufthansa hijacking. And then the plane gets diverted to Somalia, and then West Germany negotiates with the Somalian government and does all that shit and whatever. But the thing is, like, as the movie progresses, they show, like, different newscasts of that day 
saying what's happening with that. And a lot of movies do this, whether very serious movies like Wake, uh, uh, Westlake Terrace or whether it's very ridiculous movies like The Cable Guy. They'll have a background concurrent event that's progressing along with the movie. Like with, with Cable Guy, it was that fake, you know, twin kills his twin, stand sweet trial. And it right. culminates in the verdict when fucking the Cable Guy falls off the satellite and lands on a dish and then gets airlifted out. And that happens at the same time as the verdict. Or if you have Westlake Terrace, that's with the uh, those wildfires that are happening in the background of Simi Valley and eventually make their way to Simi Valley and to the cop's house. But here, they have this, they're, they're covering this news event, which was an important event in West Germany at the time. But it's not matching the progression of this story. Like, they're just showing it just because. Uh it's to depict the uh, my uh, like I uh, what I was explaining earlier about this movie is that in this movie this is a complete kind of it's not the opposite but it's like there's a lot of tidbits that are a change from the original movie they wanted to show more uh, show more of a bleak more darker depression during that time mm-hmm. uh, this movie is supposed to depict that's why like you'll see a lot of scenes where the cops were outside or it it was raining it's dark even if you look at the whole movie it's in itself i mean you put this next to like i'm just using this as an example but like a marvel movie the color is so gray it's it's not the colors aren't bright at all it's It's supposed to yeah the opposite from the original right that's what i like it is (laughs) It's supposed to depict a lot of depression uh, that what was going on at that time. I think the, that time it's supposed to take place in 1977 um, where like the Cold War uh, I had to look this up on the Cold War because I was curious like what war they were talking about but um, apparently they were talking about the Cold War that happened which started from 1941 all the way up to, no, to the 1990s and when Madame Blanc was explaining explaining to the Susie um, and not just Susie but like to the rest of the girls when she's trying to get them motivated into this how to depict a certain dance she was talking about it like uh, like an arrow being shot into the air she's saying you need to be lifted up she says uh, she's telling Susie she's oh, I'm really sorry you know I don't know where like exactly where you're from but we're f- we're from but where where we're from, she says the depression, the war, everything has gotten down so hard. You know, money is tight. Everything, everything is just harsh on everybody, and it's not, you know, it's not happy. And she explains that, and you you see that in the whole movie, at, right from the moment in the beginning when Chloe Mar- Grace Mortez walks in through the damn door, who is Patricia, talking to the psychiatrist. She's already wet, and she's already kind of babbling, but you can see it in her. She's like, she's down. She's She's got depression. She looks a little psychotic, and what she talks about seems a little out there. And, of course, you know, from the psychiatrist's point of view, he's like, you know, this girl's a little de- delusional. Hey, you know, Patricia, you know, I had another... I had another client coming in, but tell you what, he can wait. You go ahead and sit down. We'll go ahead and talk right now. And she, you see her like just the way she's sitting down on the, sitting down on the chair. She's like, she has like this panic look. She's kind of stressed. The, all these characters, they have that about them. They're so bleak. They're so like run down. They're tired. And seeing the masonry symbol and the, I wanted to let her in me. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I mean, uh, pretty pretty much this this movie. It I hate to say it, but it, it's uh, it's not like straight out forward. Like in uh, like what I was talking when I was talking to you and uh, talking to you and Joe, I was explaining. I understand why Chris isn't you know really you know really involved in this movie because this is more and I can see why I would be. This is an artsy type film. You can see it in the clothing. You can see it in the, like the way, just the way they talk and they carry themselves. Just the background, you you see this. Even the flashy imagery, you see that 
it, this is an artsy film. This isn't. I see this more, leaning more towards the word film than an actual movie. Where a movie I would consider something like you know, Bruce Willis and Die Hard, RoboCop, The Lost Boys. You know, these little action movies, uh, you know, action horror movies and stuff like that. This is more artsy film. Hmm. And you can you can see that in this in comparison to the old one where it was real colorful dark, that Dario Argentino did because this is an Italian film and they even that was overly like overly dramatic in a lot of ways you know they have their symbolism they have their stuff in it but this is like this movie personally is great for me uh, this is like I kid you not like. The whole cast is female. Yeah. The whole cast is female, dude. It's and great. <laughs> oh, man. It's like, I mean, not just like, you know, trying to be a sexist or anything like that. But I kid you not, like, they, they have strong female leads in this movie. And the only men, they make them seem, uh, they make them seem weak. They make it seem as if the men are actually the victims. In comparison to a lot of horror movies where you see the women yeah. are the victims. In this case, the men are considered the lesser beings. Yeah, you, 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 the only one that really was in the film that I remember, of course, was the old man. And, you know, he's an old man and he's there naked at the end of the film, you know, just like, you know. So, yeah, they made him. But I, I didn't really care. I was just like, oh, this film's amazing. You know, I liked that all the girls were like a great all the great actresses, all of them. You know, every, every everyone in the film um, – they really stood out, like whatever role, like Miss Tanner. I thought, you know, she had a certain look about her that went perfect for that little role, you know, to be like kind of the almost like a hench, a henchman, henchwoman, you know, for the for the main chick. So I, I love that, you know, everyone would just fit perfectly and was great. You're you know what the women at the top in this movie reminded me of? It's like the way a lot of old school Disney movies were, like fucking. Snow White, Cinderella, fucking uh, be- uh, uh, yeah. Sleeping Beauty, all that shit. Like, um, there's always that super power, that powerful evil woman involved in it. Like with Cinderella, it's not supernatural. It's just more like the the evil stepmother and the mean spirited bitch stepsisters. With <laughs> with Sleeping Beauty, it's that witch that can turn into a dragon. And with uh, Cinderella, it's the 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 witch, the mirror mirror on the wall shit. You know. And that's what these women remind me of. They remind me of that type of villainous, powerful woman character. Right. And I, I have to completely agree with that. I mean, you you can... Uh, in As far as this, uh, Tilda Swinton, who plays Madame Blanc, uh, she, actually, she actually starts... Uh, the idea was to go ahead and get another vessel, another body for... For... Uh, Mad, uh, for Mother... Marcos, uh, who was again supposedly dead at this time, but she, you find out that she's not. She's just running the things behind the scenes. But uh, and that's where Patricia ended up coming in. But later on, that didn't work. That didn't work out, and they ended up getting Dakota Johnson, Susie, and they end up uh, they end up prepping her up. Now, Madame Block, who supposedly is supposed to be the evil, you know, mother, you know, like in a uh, you know, like Cinderella, like what you were saying, she actually starts having a change of heart, and you see that uh, going towards the end. But it's not so much that she's having a change of heart, but it's so much as that she she senses there's something wrong, there's something upsetting, and she can't quite grasp it, but she knows there's something different about Susie in comparison to, like, all the other girls. You know, this girl, uh, she came all the way from, I think it was, what, Idaho? Ohio. Oh, Ohio. There you go. Mennonite family in Ohio. Right. She came all the way from over there, you know, and she ends up uh, performing to try to, so she can go ahead and and basically, like, in a way, like, not not so much performing, but, like, applying to see if she can join this academy. And with her doing... Let her live there for free, rent-free, because they, they, when they're, and their whole guys is, well, we can't pay you but we're going to let you live here rent-free since we know you need somewhere to live. We respect the financial autonomy of all women. They're like, bullshit. If someone lets you live there for free, they're expecting bullshit in return. Right, right. And, and uh, 
she ends up getting in there and uh it, it's but a, as like the story progresses and it, uh, another thing too like uh, uh since i'm saying like the story what reminded me about this when you're watching this movie it, it wasn't it neat when it says act one you know yeah. 1977 act two this thing it, like i said this leans as an artsy type movie this is leaning towards a film like not theater. so much like a what yeah like a like theater. theater exactly and i i thought that was neat and i was like i love like how they just like put the words in there the design of it the lettering it's it just like so appealing just to watch it i mean you can go ahead and watch any kind of action movie. You want to go ahead and watch Fast and the Furious. You want to watch Star Wars. I mean, that's all great. But you want to watch some films. I mean, there's some good old classic. I mean, they they don't have to go ahead and tell you straight out exactly what happens. But, you know, they're going to go ahead and they start leading subtle hints. Like, uh, so, you know, like, like I said, uh, this movie, uh, the, the whole story and, uh, like I, uh, like I was explaining earlier, I can see why Chris, you know, didn't really appeal to this movie so well. And it, there was a lot of people that I've talked to, you know, that love horror movies or, uh, you know, kind of back and forth. They like certain other action movies and stuff like that, but. They, uh, when I asked them, I was like, hey, did you watch this movie? And they were like, oh, I didn't get it. I didn't really care for it. Oh, no, it was just a lot of talk or this and this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, did you happen to understand, like, what the story was about? Mm-hmm. No, I don't know. It's something that they want the girl or something like that. And, <laughs> yeah. and, that's, usually, and that's usually what a lot of people, they, I usually get that it was weird because of the dancing and, uh, let, let me give, like, a brief story of, like, what this thing is about. Mm-hmm. Because I, I kind of feel like we're talking about this, and as some somebody's probably questioning, and, you know, as they're listening to us, like, so what is this movie about, you know? Uh, the idea of this movie is that... The, the whole point of this movie is that there's, uh, there's a dance studio in Germany that's running under the ruse uh, that it, it's a dance company. But secretly... The ruse is, is that it's a, it's a witch's coven. So pretty much these witches, it's run by like these two hierarchy uh, witches, that, these two badass witches. And the one that's supposedly in charge, like the big shot, her body is old. She's like 90 years old. It has like diseases. It's dying. She looks disgusting. <laughs> Just flat that out. Was disgusting. Female fucking job of the hut. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, that's a perfect description right there. I mean, she is nasty looking. She's gross. But she needs a new body. So what this dance company is doing, they're like, okay, it's time. We need to start searching out a girl. And let's start, let's start scrolling through our, our girls that are enlisted, our students, and see if we can get one of them, you know, be they have to be willing to do so. To go ahead and be able to give up their body for the better, which would be Mother Marcos, the big shot, the job of the hut. So that's pretty much what this movie's about. Now, as far as like now, everything that we're talking about mothers, the the whole the whole backstory on that is that there's three mothers, supposedly gods, that predate before God, before Christ, before the devil. This was like, this is a time when the universe was functioning in a certain way before we decided to say, a hey, Christ, and there was the Lord, and before, this predates all that. There's three mothers, the mother of size, the mother of darkness, and the, and the mother of tears, which is Mother Superiorium, Mother Loc- Locantarium, and, and Mother Tedenbaum. And these three mothers, they are the ones that pretty much here we think that, oh, it's God that's doing this or the devil did this. 
it's really the idea that they're setting is that these three mothers are what function the world. Every bad event, the Black Plague, wars, the, all this stuff has been functioning and running due to the three mothers. They're the ones that are the ones that set things in motion. The idea behind this dance academy, uh, what they... I, the whole thing is artsy, so you have to kind of keep you have to keep in mind that when you're watching this film, you're you're getting prepared to like see. You have to look for those subtle hints. They're not just gonna flat out tell you. And, and it's funny how I say that because right in the beginning, the girl who just walks in and starts ranting to her psychiatrist, uh, Kempler, she ends up ranting to him all this stuff, and it's a setup to the whole movie. She even uh, the girl, she had she got wind of this. She was supposed to be the vessel, and it didn't work out that way. She ends up explaining, they took my hair, they took my urine, mm -hmm. they see through my eyes, they know what I know, and she's panicking. You think through the psychiatrist's point of view, this girl is delusional. She's probably on drugs, you know, blah blah blah, this and this. That's the way you know this girl is, but. Honestly, she's telling the truth. She's just, she's paranoid. She's, she's in a panic. She's, she's scared, but she doesn't know how to stay. She doesn't know how to explain it without saying, sounding like a lunatic. Later on, these witches end up getting a hold of this psychiatrist, and they end up explaining them. Oh, they're all like, oh, you go ahead, and all you men do are lie, lie, lie. When a woman goes ahead and tells you she has problems, she's delusional. But yet, you know, if anybody else has problems, you know, oh, it's, you know, it, there's some, there's some cycle, there's some reasoning for it. But if a woman does it, it's, you know, she's delusional. She has mental issues. And that's why I said this movie is, uh, you got the three mothers. You got the strong witches. That it, it's all female ba based, you know. For being a horror movie, I I like that. I like how it's 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 kind of taking a different approach. That Dario Argentino film, same way. You got the female. You got the strong female leads in there. There are a couple of men that are in there, but they're treated as servants. Again, the whole Suspiria type movie the theme is showing how strong the women are in comparison to men men are always strong they're always the killers they're always the heroes you you never see too much of the females now you know more modern day females are taking more of a stronger lead you know you a lot of you know fight for your right you know strong women independent women you got wonder woman all this kind of stuff but this i mean this is kind of setting a tone for a darker version of you, they don't always have to be superheroes. I mean, you got, you know, more of a darker theme for it. And that's where this movie kind of goes on. So, basically, the side note, it, you kind of think there's like a side story to this. And it is, in a way. Uh, there's the psychiatrist in the beginning, and you're following his story as well. So you kind of feel like a lot of people felt like it made no sense. Why am I following this psychiatrist? It doesn't make any sense. You know, I'm, we're supposed to be following the girl. She's supposed to be Dakota Johnson. She is the the main actress. Why do I even care about this backstory on this psychiatrist? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a reasoning for that. Again, this is the artsy type theme that goes into it. The psychiatrist's point of view, <laughs> who's play, it's a woman playing a man, ends up, uh, you get to see his point of view and basically kind of showing how messed up men can be it, it it makes it seem like he's more the victim in the movie mm -hmm. but he's more uh, you kind of see that he's more of an asshole than he kind of lets off uh the reason why i say asshole is because they give a, a sad backstory that he was he was uh the whole holocaust that was uh the auschwitz that whole uh during the nazi regime regime when that was happening his wife had told him for years, we need to get out of here. We need to break free. And he's like, no, no, no. He's stuck with his country. He loves his country. He wants to be there. All of a sudden, shit gets bad. Later on, you end, uh, he, you know, he left and became a psychiatrist. He left his wife behind. 
Yeah. You don't find that out till later on in the story Who, when the witches get Who's the original actress from seventy seven, his wife. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh man, she's like a yeah, from the original She's the original uh, Susie Banner, dude, so Yeah, she and she, kinda, Banner, she yeah. Yeah, she didn't reprise her role, but she did get a spot into the movie, yeah. which was really neat. I hope to meet her one day. I, I, no, she's... that's great. That's like that's like in the Brady Bunch movie when Alice plays the truck driver, <laughs> <laughs> and, when, and when the original Mrs. Brady plays Grandma Brady. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah I forgot yeah, that yeah, part. Yeah. So of course, Chris gets his ass over with the Brady Bunch, dude. Yeah, <laughs> but remember fucking, and she tells him, she she runs into him by the Berlin Wall and tells him, oh, I fled down to Zurich, Switzerland, and then I went to Paris, then I went to Bristol, England, and now I came back here, you know, it's like, fuck, but yeah, no, you're right, yeah. you're right, he was, he was a loyal Nazi supporter. Right, and the reason, the reasoning why he was kidnapped and thrown in front of this ritual, having to witness the whole thing is basically in a way to pay for his sins for being an asshole, you know. And so he's witnessing this, you know, after Mother Superiorium, you know, or Dakota Johnson reveals, you know, who she really is and what she's really doing there to end the corruption of Mother Marcos and all her supporters, she ends up killing them all by resurrecting Death himself, who looks fucking weird as shit. Fucking Swamp Thing motherfucker. So he comes in, starts blowing up heads, but, you know, after the whole thing is done, they end up getting the old man and they send him on his way. He ends up back at home and he's kind of like in a shock in a way. He's kind of, so guess who visits him? Mother Superiorium or Dakota Johnson. She comes in and she's all, she tells him and she sympathizes with him and she's all, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry, you know, what you witnessed. You weren't supposed to witness that. Now, whether this is, you know, now whether this is like a punishment or something grateful, uh, however way you want to perceive this, but. She uh, she ends up explaining. She says, right. "So you ended up saying uh, she, he ended up uh, trying to get help to try to retrieve his wife who never came." He she ends up explaining, which is a re- I, out of the whole movie. Honestly, this is like the only part that really made me like feel like shit. Like I felt sad for him. Was she ended up explaining to him your wife? She was in the camp. She ended up dying. She she was out in the cold. But she was not alone. So there he is. He starts breaking down and crying. He's like upset. He he can't believe like what he's hearing. So she's explaining to him, but she wasn't alone. She died with two other women, you know, in their arms, you know, freezing to death. But her last thoughts were of him when they first went out on their first date and I was like, Oh, what the hell? I was like, really? Mm -hmm. That's what you want to tell him? I was like, Oh, that, that is that shit. Why are you going to go ahead and tell him all that shit? So he, he's breaking down. You, you feel like shit for him. Uh, this is on the last act. It's called slice of a pear and it's so, so upsetting. And then she says, but she says, I'm not going to let you suffer with this. I'm going to wipe everything from your mind. You won't remember any of this. So she wipes everything from his mind. That's what she, she told him the truth of everything that happened to his wife because he never knew what happened to her. So she wipes everything from that moment that she told him and everything from that ritual, from the dance, from the Volk dance. So she wiped everything from his mind. So, it's kind of good so he doesn't have to suffer with all that but at the same time it's not because he's still going to be left wondering what the hell happened to my wife I've been searching for her for years so it ends up seeing him um, you know going back there's like a carving where in this like little kind of shack 
where it has both of their initials into it, and then it kind of ends off, you know, it, and then it starts playing the music of uh, Tom York ends up playing the, the music for it. Uh, he was specifically asked to go ahead and design some music specifically for this movie. And uh, it, honestly, I love the music so much. I went and I went out and I bought the vinyl for it. I, <laughs> I, I didn't open it. I didn't open it just because, like, in case if I ever meet Tom York, I'd get him the autograph. But wow. uh, it's still in the wrapping. But I do listen to the soundtrack, and you all probably seen me, you know, I, I swear, every time I start drinking, I start putting that music on. And uh, I'll record it, and I throw it on my Instagram storyboard there. Um, but, yeah, I fucking love the music. It, it's it's neat. It just has, like, a sad, depressing... It, Again, it, it that if you listen to the lyrics of that song, it, it sounds like they're supporting women. Like this whole movie is an artsy type film that's kind of built for strong women for a horror thing, which is to me, I can go on and on, and I don't want to take that time away from you guys. But honestly, this, this movie is really great. I got a high rating for this damn film. <laughs> no, I like I like to hear you talk about it because yeah, I mean. You know, we all have our different experiences, and like uh, typically, there's gonna be well for the hopefully there's one of us whatever movie we're watching, whoever like you know is the one that um, says hey we should watch this. They're typically the one that's gonna have that that uh, most connection to it, you know, biggest connection to it. So of course, like I was like you know wanted to go ahead and just have me and Chris. Can I just talk about it because I know Chris ain't gonna give this this whole you know love story of an explanation on why he loves or hates this movie so i was waiting for you at the end to kind of like break it down explain it so and i'm glad i'm glad you did that Chris, I want you to give your rating first. Just give your over. I mean, you already told you already shit on the movie, dude. But is any kind of anything that you left out? Because I know we're gonna have to give Gabe like his his like you know orchestra ending where he's gonna go out in a blaze of glory talking about you know how badass this is, dude. But, so, but I'll let you shit on it first, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a six and a half. Ooh, that's it. You're like six and, and a half, and go fuck and, yourself. And here's well. <laughs> And here's the thing. Mm-hmm. A person should be able to feel fulfilled and intellectually and emotionally understand a movie with just one time. And I and I know, and I know this from experience, and we all know this from experience, every time you watch a movie, you catch something in it that you didn't catch the first time or the second time or the third time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, how many times did you and I watch Carlito's Way and not caught when they mentioned Laleen going away for 30 years at the very beginning of the fucking film. I mean, come on. That's the human condition. You don't always catch every little thing in dialogue. It's it's natural. Okay. But. 30 years, man. <laughs> I beat it. I, I did a lot of reading like you. <laughs> but, uh, but the thing is, like, okay. When I watched it the second time here tonight before we started the po- podcast... I started catching a lot of things, and it, it gelled, and it made a little more sense the second time around than the first time. But it's like, again, it's just like if it's a good movie, if it's it's well constructed, well put together, I shouldn't have to have watched the whole thing and then watched again for it to really click. It should mostly click, mostly click, the first time, and this really didn't here. But again, I liked I liked the German imagery of like the wall, the Berlin Wall in the background the whole time. I like that they referenced a historical event, although I don't think it matched the energy and the progression of events with that whole RAF thing. Um, I I just think they were trying too hard to be intellectual and over people's heads and shit like that, and and that's fine, but it just didn't really do it for me. And once again, Dakota Johnson's in a slow pace, nothing really happening, doesn't make a whole lot of sense movie, just like uh, Bad Times at the El Royale. But the first fucking Suspiria, the 1977 one, I like that. Oh, no. We'll get to that, Chris motherfucker um i love this movie i knew right away because i'm again like you're saying all this well you know i understand that yeah some people are not going to like a movie that's not a slasher 
it's not paranormal and this is a filmy film to where you know when lady helena uh, helena whatever all of a sudden shows up in the room in the corner and the camera zooms into her and then you, you the, there's a shot of her in the mirror like you know they, they use the mirror as you know with different angles i love all that um but that's not the reason why i like this film those are just additions to the film it's not stuff that i was all like oh that's gonna make me like or dislike the film i like the whole witchcraft kind of thing i love the movie the witch i i like those movies that are not that they make you overly think, but they don't just, okay, you know, you need your ABCs of a film, and this is all I'm going to, like, you know, it can be more than that. Like, I like those films, too. I'm not saying that a film needs to be one way or another, but I'm not going to hate a film for not being something that I'm used to, or it's going to make me sit there and watch it. Now, I'm not saying that if, if that I don't like, there, there's films that I don't like that are like that. There are some films where I'm like, like no, nah, I'm not into that. So, but for me, for this film, um... I liked it right away just hearing that oh there's fucking there's there's a fucking school with witches and obviously they're they're doing shit with this chick's piss and all everything hair and you're like what she's got your you know and so I'm like oh wow this is kind of crazy you know because um like I said witchcraft and shit like that that right away freaks me out um because it's it's one of those things to where the way she's telling the psychiatrist, like, oh, they're trying to do – like, if you try to tell somebody that, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, you're full of shit, you know. So to me, it's, like, right away believable. It's right away scary, and it's right away, like, what – you know. I thought that the old man was in on the, the whole business right away when she's telling him. I'm like, oh, no, you know, he's closing the door. You know, he's going to go and get her. You know, I thought – you know, so it was – I like I liked everything about the film, um, especially the ending. It was crazy. Um, I'm going to give Gabe his time just because, you know, this is his film, but – for me, a 10 out of 10, I love this film. This is one of those films that, like, with Haunt, you didn't get to see that one. Well, I think you saw it at, at Daniel's, but still, um, like, for Halloween, I'm always looking for different films that I haven't been watching 100,000 times. So Haunt and the remake of Suspiria are definitely going to be on my, my 31 days of Halloween. So, yeah, 10 out of 10 for me, loved it, dude. But go ahead, Gabe. Yeah, like, I kid you not, like, this movie... Uh, I love the old one. The old one was great. But this movie in particular, like, it's just, it's just a chill movie. Mm -hmm. Like, it, like, like I said, there's a whole bunch of action movies out there. They're pretty rowdy and stuff. But, I mean, sometimes, like, you just kind of, you don't want all that rowdiness. You, you had a long day. You, you heard all kinds of weird, (laughs) you know, all kinds of car honking and stuff like that traffic. And you just kind of want to settle down and just say, like, you know what? I just need something to relax to, just something to calm my nerves. I had a rough day yelling at the boss, boss yelling at me, whatever. Then this movie is just chill. It's great. I, I love the movie. Like I said, it leans more towards artsy type. Uh, just to kind of, uh, for people that have already seen it and they do love it, you know, there are other movies, and I kid you not, that are ex- not exactly, but extremely close to just like this one if you ever seen uh black swan with uh natalie portman it's the same type of thing it has to do with dancing and it has all the weird psychological kind of weird things like the artsy type stuff uh that also follows along with it um there's a uh, if you love this the whole Suspiria, like if you watch the original old one and you want to watch part two and then you want to know if there's a two or a three, there is. It's called Inferno. And then the third one is called Mother of Tears. Also great suggestions. Also, like, honestly, those are great movies. If you love, if you want to get more into the whole Suspiria and you want to know more about these witches in their background or more about the three mothers, you need to watch those two films as well. Those are great. Uh, Wait, I have a question. Yes. Question for both of y'all. Oh. When when fucking Dakota Johnson is sitting down, Susie Banyan or mother, whoever the fuck she became, is sitting down with Dr. Klemper in his deathbed or whatever, explaining what happened to his wife. Mm-hmm. Were you not reminded of the ending of Phantasm Five when uh, Mike and Jody are, are at the deathbed <laughs> with uh, Reggie? It it didn't occur to me, but. <laughs> the whole dementia thing, uh, it, I mean, honestly, <laughs> that kind of it kind of fits very well with that, you know. Because because well, here's why: because the the 
duplicitous narrative. You have two different narratives going on of what is actually happening and what actually happened. Uh, 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 two narratives? Yeah, dual narratives. So, like, you have the narrative of Jody never did betray Mike, or whatever, and they're all buddies again. And at right. the same time, you have this narrative, of, and they're riding around in that sports car. But then at the right. same time, he's yeah, he he laying on his deathbed with Mike and Jody at his side. What's really going on? What was real the whole time? You don't know. And Dr. Klemper here, he's on his deathbed being told by uh, Susie Bannon or whoever. You know, this is what happened to your wife. But then he ran into his wife earlier, and she told him, you know. Well, but Su- know Susie Sugar Ass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the witches. Yeah, uh, that those uh, that wasn't uh, that wasn't his wife. That was an illusion to attract him there to the academy, so he can pay for the sins. The whole story with his wife actually did happen. That wasn't a memory. That's why when he snapped out of it and he was looking around, the uh, his wife was gone. But then all of a sudden the witches came out and grabbed him. That's yeah, why I was he like, was kinda... I'm glad you said that because I was like, How, what the fuck happened here? You know, because I was just like, first he's talking to his wife, and then they're dragging his ass in there. Giving him a stomp, you know. No, yeah, that that was a that was a whole illusion thing, uh, because you kind of, you see that also too when they're walking out of it, uh, after the whole ritual thing, and he's walking out with, with one of the witches. She's like singing a song, and she's like kind of walking him, like you know, shoulder and shoulder, you know, like singing a song and trying to get him to go back home. But no, the whole, the whole thing, uh, that whole section with his wife. Uh, he never knew what happened to her. He and then when he actually ran into her, she's all like, "Oh, I actually, you know." She starts explaining like what happened and all that, but that that was all a lie. That's why when they when he was looking around and she was gone, they grabbed him and they took him in. She started. Uh, they started yelling at him, saying, "Oh, uh, you're just a liar." You know, if a woman goes ahead and does it. You know, we're delusional, but you all men, you know, you all are a bunch of full of shit, you know, and yeah, that whole, that whole section with his wife, that was a lie. He really didn't know what happened. That's why at the end, she ended up explaining, you know, what really happened. But I can see what a double narrative would probably be, though, for him. Uh, All the events that happened is actually, you know, what really happened, but, uh, but what uh, the double narrative? What would probably be for him would be because he's told one thing, but then, you know, they end up wiping out his mind. So now he's left with the whole, you know, he's back where he started from the beginning, where he doesn't know what the hell happened to his wife. But uh, I mean that. I mean that's my kind of take on what happened there. Mm-hmm. Now I'm, I'm the same way when you said like. You know, the whole – I don't want to jump in when you were talking because I don't want to, you know, lose your train of thought there. But I'm the same way. I think I've talked about it. I'll, I'll, I'll keep fucking talking about it till we get to the film. But I, I love Hellraiser Inferno because it's so, like, chill compared to, like, you know, Hellraiser where it's all ridiculous. And, like, it's one of those – like the same thing, kind of like suspense, build up mystery kind of thing where that's the reason why I love it. It's so chill. I mean, there's, like, crazy things like this. But when we get to it – um. Like you, you all see what I mean, you know. But anyway, um, yeah. yeah. I'm a, I, it, man, we're gonna have to get to that movie too, cause I, I love that movie too, man. It's like uh, I love it when he's already like screaming at the end, and he's sitting on his bed, and he's like, ah, he's like all upset and everything. Oh, so you've seen uh, you, you've seen that, right? Hellraiser Inferno. Oh, I have that damn movie. Yeah, yeah it's a good so movie. it's like this. What does it mean? This is a better movie, but it's like similar, very similar, like to where. It's just like they're they're taking you on this journey. There's not – it's this guy by himself talking to himself, all kind of like – it's like, you know, it's just like a completely different than all the other Hellraiser films. I guess that's why I like it. So Yeah, because like Hellraiser 1 through 3 actually has a story about the box and the characters itself. And then everything after that, which is Inferno, Hellworld, and all that, they, they're kind of like their own mm-hmm. – uh, they're their own uh, storylines. They're, they're their own – they're not just focused on Pinhead either, you know. I yeah, they're how, just people like that kind of Pinhead, entrap themselves. Yeah. I like how Pinhead in parts one through three sounds like a Dave Chappelle's impersonation of Prince. <laughs> anyway. You know, uh, anyways, I, um, as far as my review, I have to give it on my 
on my 10 out of 10, if I'm trapped on a den, desert island, nothing yeah. else to watch except one movie, you know, this is like one of those movies I would take to my den, desert island. Yeah. Uh, it's a good movie. It's one of those rare ones. Child's Play Part 1 is definitely a 10 out of 10. This movie is a 10 out of 10. You know, there's very few 10s that I actually have out of there. And this is definitely one of them. I watch this pretty often. I love that damn movie. Even when I'm just... Ain't nothing else to watch. I'm like, you just put it on, right? Yeah, that's the way I I want to do it now. (laughs) Yeah, that's the way I feel about it too. Is like one of those things where I'm just going to put on now and just, you know, if I'm cleaning my house, whatever, it's just like it's got that awesome awesomeness to it to when you're passing by you're like oh yeah this is a good part <laughs> yeah, so um anyway when you start doing ballet. yeah start dancing around the house <laughs> <laughs> um next there film we're, <laughs> yeah that, that'd be some scary shit next film we're doing is what's it called <laughs> what's it called uh gabe daniel isn't real daniel isn't real that is a. Uh... That is a damn good movie. I'm not going to give no spoilers on it, but uh, what attracted to me, I, I didn't even know about this movie. Up uh, As much as I love horror, I love art. And so one of those things that falls into art is comic books. So there's a fa- there's a, one of my favorite comic book artists, uh, Jock, and that's his, uh, that's his pen name. And he does, like, a lot of covers for, like, Batman and, and uh, does Batman covers, Star Wars. He does movie posters and stuff like that. Well, he particularly did the movie cover or uh, for that movie, Daniel Isn't Real. And so I was like, man, I was blown away by it. And I was like, wow, that looks so fantastic. What the hell is Daniel Isn't Real? All right, well, I guess I have no choice. I got to look it up. So looked it up, started reading into it. I was like, oh, okay, on a whim. Why not? Ain't got nothing else to do. Go ahead, and I threw that movie on, started drawing while I was trying to watch it, and, you know, before you know it, I put the damn, I put my damn drawing pad down, glued my eyes to the damn television. This thing was badass. I was like, man, this thing, uh, they gave it a rating on uh, IMDB as a, a, I think it was like a six and a half out of ten, but honestly, for me, I saw this, and I was like, what the hell? I was like, man, this is a good ass movie. I was like, man, this uh, this is underrated here. So yeah, I I watched it a couple of times, and I don't have it, um, because this was uh one of those Shutter exclusives. Yeah. yeah. When I did have Shutter, now that I don't have Shutter, now I kind of feel like, oh, you know what? Why don't I just buy the damn movie? So now that we're since I brought that up, and y'all are willing to go ahead and uh watch this movie i'm i'm just gonna go ahead and buy the damn movie you know it's it's, for me it was good and uh, like i had mentioned too i think chris will might actually uh actually he'll enjoy this a lot better than suspiria oh oh i got i got seven minutes into it and i gotta tell you i was already grabbed so i'm i'm pretty sure i mean maybe i'll be let down at the end but at least for now i'm in now i liked also too fucking sam goldman's the producer on this Mm mm-hmm He's like, that's it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, Good job. <laughs> we learned something. He's like, that's all I like about it. So, yeah. Yep. There's that. <laughs> anyway, before we start talking about uh, Daniel, is it real, dude? So, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And like always, we'll see you on the next one. Man, you got to be shitting me. That mother's strong. Peace. Peace. Good night and Godspeed. Ha, 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 ha.